Welcome to the second application in the Flutter Block Beginner Tutorial Series, where you'll learn how to do state management with the block architecture. The first application was a simple application that focused on teaching you state, event, and block files using the VS Code extensions and some modifications. You press on the button and it changes the background color. Today, we're going to build on this knowledge, use images from the free image hosting site, Lorem Pixum, and we're going to build a small application that will allow you to cycle through a bunch of random images from the site forward and backwards. Code for this tutorial is available on GitHub, though I do encourage you to go through the tutorial and try to do it on your own after you review it a few times. Let's get started. I'm going to create it for Linux, but you should create it for Windows, Mac, or iOS or Android, depending on what you want it to run on. I think I spelled platforms wrong. We're going to have to add a few packages, flutter pub add, we're going to add equitable, and flutter block, whoops. Flutter pub add, there you go. Okay, so I'm in the directory with all my files, so I'm going to start a VS Code. And we're off and running. So within the lib folder, I'm going to delete most of the code here. I'm going to create a stateless widget. So I'm typing STL S and then the stateless widget comes up right here. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to do my app. So instead of the uh, container here, I'm going to return a material app because I just deleted it. And the material app requires a home. And I'm going to return a column here. The column has some children, which we'll fill in shortly. I'm using this free image server called Pixum Photos. And if you scroll down below this nice looking dog, there's a static random image URL. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to drop it into my column here. Oh. So image.network, I'm going to drop in the URL. The URL is uh, higher than it is wide so it's kind of a portrait i'm going to convert it to landscape but let's first check it out so i did selected run and run without debugging so i've got the image here but i want to i think i like it better if it's wider so i'm going to switch the orientation So 300 by 200, I kind of like this. In the column, main axis alignment, then I'll go main axis alignment dot space evenly. So it's coming kind of to the center now, but I'm gonna put some uh, row of buttons under here. So I'll go um, row, and row have children, and I'll have two text buttons text button. The text button on press, I'll do the parentheses and then the curly brackets. The child will be uh, text. Let's call it like previous. Make that a const. So I've got this previous button right here. It's doing nothing. But I'll Hook it up soon. Let's see. 
want another button text button on press is the same it will be round parenthesis and then the curly brackets was empty right now and then we'll just do a const text next okay, beautiful let's just center it main axis alignment I'll do the same one so I'll do space evenly okay maybe slightly bigger so I'll go style text style font size maybe let's go 24 how does it look yeah a little bit better I kind of like the bigger so I'll just copy the style and I'll drop it in after the next so this is within the parentheses and it's after the string Make the P lowercase. Okay. Okay, let's start hooking up to the block uh, system here. So I have my mouse over at Matura app and I've clicked it. And there's a little light bulb here. I'm going to click on the light bulb and hold it. I'm going to go down to block provider. There's many of these block wrap with block provider wrap with block consumer but we're selecting wrap with block provider and release the mouse and it requires a block here so let's go ahead and create the block right now so i'm going to right click on lib and i'm going to do a new folder i'm going to do blocks with a s blocks and then right click on it again and now we're going to go down to block new block go release the mouse this window at the pop, this little uh, at the top of VS Code pops open. And I'm going to put an image in here. It says block name, press enter. So the block name is image. I'll press enter. Boom. All these three files were created for me, right? Image block, image event, image state. I'm going to rename the second block. So it's blocks block. The one without the S, I'm going to have my mouse over this, right click on the block without the S, and then I'm going to rename it. So this second block I'm going to re rename to image. So now I have this folder blocks. Within the folder blocks, there's a folder called image. Within image, there's three files. It's the image block, the class of image block, image event, and the class is image event and the image state here. Let's go back to main. So this requires a, a block here, which is going to be the image block. We just created it. And let's try to import it. So I did control dot, and I'm going to select this first one, image library, blocks image. It's the one we just created. So this block provider, it's not coming up when I do control dot. So I'm going to import it manually. So syntax is import package. Package name is flutter block slash flutter block dot dot right here. It requires a semicolon at the end. So right at the top, I manually imported package colon flutter underscore block slash flutter underscore block dot dart with a semicolon. So now here I'm going to put my mouse on the column. Column is all our U UI stuff here. And I've clicked on the column and I'm going to click on this little light bulb. And then I'm going to go down to wrap with block builder. So there's a lot of these wraps again. Make sure you select the wrap with block builder, right? We want to build rebuild this widget based on some input here boom now i'm going to type in image and it filled out nicely image block and image state for me so 
that give that a save reload it our app is functioning exactly the same right now but let's get into these files here the state the event and the block let's first focus on the image state and there's a couple of things that we're going to need to do here I'm going to delete this abstract first and this const I'm going to create a oh, I'm going to use an integer call it seed number for a random um, random number Do curly brackets required? Could delete this initial image class. Okay. Put the seed number in here. I'm going to click on the seed number again and I'm going to select copy with and I'll do it again and uh, select two string right here. Then let's create the factory constructor. So the name of the constructor is the same as the um, class, so it's image state. Let's call it our initial. We'll pass it a seed. Image state. Let's go 10. It's just any number the way this uh, works here. Okay. And the block is now red because we, we've we deleted this image initial. Right? So it's not image state dot initial. Okay, very good. So this image state dot initial, we just created the factory constructor right here. Right? It's the same it's the same name as this right here. Okay, everything's still working. So the seed right here, the way the URL works is this initial pixel is a seed, but we can now change it. So we're gonna use string interpolation. And in Dart, it's just dollar sign. And in the curly bracket, you can put a nice variable here. So we're going to grab the state and the state has the seed number. So based on this, we'll get a different image. Okay, if we increment it here manually, just as a test, so I'll go 11 and I reload it. There's a new image, right? So you can see the logic here that, um, so I'll put it back to 10. I'll reload it. Goes back to this nice, looks like a wolf, huh? It's a good looking animal. We'll go nine. It's a different seed, there's a different image. So we're gonna uh, use the buttons to increment and decrement it. So there's these three files, image block, image event, image state. We work on image state. Let's go to the image event. Create some events. Um, say there's previous image event to show the previous image. And we're going to have it extend the image event. And the other one is the next image event. And that will extend also image event. Okay, we've got two events. We're done. 
Okay, let's next check out our block here. All right, we just created these two nice events, previous image event, next image event. Let's use them. So we got the previous image event, and then we got the next image event. Okay, got our two events here, and we just need to handle the event. So we're going to emit we're going to emit the state here. So we're going to emit the image state and the image state as you recall we set it up to require the seed number so we can pass it in but we want to increment it, or in this case, decrement it, because we we're going to subtract one or some number. So I'm just going to access the state, and this that's part of the cool part is we can get the existing state of the seed number and subtract one, right? So for this one, next image, we're going to emit the image state again. We need the seed number and we'll add one to it. Okay, let's hook it up to main.dart now. So if we've got the hooked up here, right? Because it's already, when we change the state, this image is going to change. We just need to hook up these buttons to change the state. So let's do the previous button first. This one right here. So the syntax is context.read is similar to provider, right? And then this is curly brackets. And we want to put the name of the block, which is image block in. Then we have these round parentheses. Then there's this new method add. And this is how we're going to add the event. So the way that the paradigm here works is that, um, is it next or previous? Previous. Previous image. Previous, there we go, previous image event. So you have to add an event to the stream and this is how it's going to cycle through it. Previous is working. Beautiful. Oh, interesting image. Okay. Let's work on the next button here. So same syntax, context.read. We've got the image block here, which is the name of our block, round with the parentheses, the so add the add method is from the, uh, the block package here, right? Because we're adding the event to the stream. And it's the next image event that we created. Beautiful. Boom, boom, boom. All right, it's working. Lovely. In the next video, we're going to start hooking this thing up to the camera. I know this is what you've been waiting for. We're going to be using the Rico Theta camera. It has this beautiful web API with full documentation for it. So instead of grabbing the images from Lorem Pixum, we'll be grabbing it from Rico Theta camera. So subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for this update. Have a great day.